market day that we have been entering into the day four of our Philoma 2020 international webinar series. And I welcome you all for this day to learn something, a great lesson from our expert speaker. Now I request Mr. Koteshwaran, head UG English ESF, to welcome the gathering. Good morning, friends. I welcome you all to the fourth day of Philoma 2020. Today's special lecture on life skills by Dr. Usha Ishwaran, a dynamic personality, held many respectable positions in many reputed institutions, motivational speaker, educationalist, academician, life skill coach, entrepreneur, career guidance analyst, and has and her inspiring motivational talk has opened the eyes of many audiences. She is an international certified trainer on teaching methodologies by University of Cambridge. Her ease in conveying most complex issues have struck a right chord with her audience and her brilliance in sharing power in unconventional wisdom, worded mostly simply is an unique talent to which she owes her immense popularity. Ma'am, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm Welcome. very happy and uh, feel honored to be a part of your uh, webinar series. And uh, as you said, life skill is a very vast subject too. We cannot uh, complete everything on a one hour session, but let us see what best we can to uh, feel the experience of it. I just want to give you a feel of different uh, situations with which we can experience and feel our own self. So uh, let me start the webinar. I'm uh, Usha Yeshwaran. I welcome all the attendees uh, who have come with a lot of expectation to this uh, webinar. Already the introduction has been given. I'm uh, Professor Dr. Usha Yeshwaran. I'm a member planning board in Trivalver University and also run a company named Seek. I'm the CEO of the company wherein uh, we uh, focus on skill development, career guidance and academic consultancy. And it's about me. I have uh, been into uh, so many uh, areas to improve uh, the quality of education. So I'm an academician, educationist, entrepreneur, career analyst, life skill coach, motivational speaker, NLP master practitioner, and a YouTuber. And I have 30 years of experience in the field of uh, education and industry and uh, addressed more than 20 lakh of uh, people and uh, trained more than 1 lakh students and placed more than 10,000 uh, students and counseled more than 1 lakh people. Ladies and gentlemen, it is widely accepted personalities are seldom born. They are forged. In order to achieve unprecedented success, one always has to take the road less traveled. Although the case with the modern day student is entirely different. Students do not want to take the tough path and have conveniently adopted to follow the herd mentality. Students today are suffering from stress-related problems as they are never taught the art of managing stress in the schooling years. This is one of the major drawbacks in the system of education in our country. The curriculum has missed out on major life skills subjects like anger management, stress management, confidence and self-esteem building, fighting peer pressure and also falling into addiction, etc. In a survey, over 20,000 teenage students were asked questions related to stress. Almost 45% of them admitted they feel stressed almost all the time. The major reason behind the stress was the pressure from family, teachers, peers, and school. Students today are vulnerable than ever as with the increasing competition. Their ability to handle the pressure has been enhanced. It is same like sending a warrior to battle in a war without weapons and armor. It is but natural that he will fail 99% of the time. 
students also need to develop creativity and curiosity that indeed are the biggest teachers in the world. When students are curious and happy, they find the key to their problems by themselves as they get a sudden surge of enthusiasm in them. Arming them with necessary life skills is crucial to enable them to cope with post-school environment, handle stress better, be more social and be more employable. Life is competitive and unless children are empowered with these essential skills, they would not be able to stand apart in a crowd. Therefore, there is a dire need to prepare them for the life ahead by giving them a much needed platform. As teachers and parents, it's our responsibility to impart life skills to our students as well as our children and also for us to follow. Life skill is a term used to describe a set of basic skills acquired through learning and also directly from life experience that enable individuals and groups to effectively handle issues and problems commonly encountered in daily life. They include conflict resolution when problems go beyond our control and acceptance when an unchangeable happens. Self-confidence when you feel discouraged in life and decision-making when you struggle to make the right choice. Concentrating on our attitude to raise up in our life. Presence of mind, a tool to deal with difficult situations. Empathy, to love and respect those around you. The attitude of gratitude and secrets of good relationships. Compassion to defeat indifferences. Compassion to improve relationships. Life skills act as facilitators to strengthen the survival capacities of an individual. This is what is the need of life skill. Why we need? Life skills actually touch upon issues that are real. That is, they actually affect people's lives and they are topical too. And sometimes they are sensitive. They can affect people on a personal level, especially when family and friends are involved. Often controversial, because people disagree and hold strong opinions about them and ultimately moral when they relate to what people think is right or wrong, good or bad, important or unimportant to society. Why do we need life skills? The country need active, informed, and responsible citizens who are willing and able to take responsibilities for themselves, for their own lives and their communities and contribute to the overall process. Why should we teach life skills? Children will be aware of the rights and responsibilities as uh, uh, citizens and they will be informed about the social and political issues and they will be concerned about the welfare of others and they will be able to clearly articulate their opinions and arguments. They will be capable of having an influence in the world. They will also be active in their communities and they will be responsible in how they act as citizens. Now let us see this targeting life skills model. With this model, skills that are needed for positive growth and development of a youth are aligned with four components of 4-H pledge. They are nothing but head, heart, hands, and health. First, let us see the heart, which indicates personal and social competencies. Relating and caring are the two sections. Relating deals with establishing a mutual or reciprocal connection between two people that is wholesome and meaningful to both. And caring deals with showing understanding, kindness, concern, and affection for others. Then comes the hands, which deals with occasional and citizenship competencies. Giving and working are the two sections here. 
giving deals with providing supplying or causing to happen that is nothing but the social responsibility and working deals with accomplishing something or earning pay to support oneself through mental and physical effort then comes the head which deals with knowledge reasoning and creative competencies thinking and managing or the two sections here and thinking deals with using one's mind to form ideas and make decisions and to imagine to examine carefully in the mind and managing deals with using resources to accomplish a purpose then comes the health it deals with health and physical competencies living and being are two sections here and living deals with acting or behaving the manner or style of daily life and being deals with living one's life pursuing one's basic nature now let me explain few skills with the help of some situations first let us see problem solving this is very essential in all of our lives either it is a personal or professional when problems are beyond our control how do we deal with it suppose you imagine a scenario when you add five times the amount of lemon to the water than what is actually needed it tastes so sour somehow or the other we need to correct this now and as much as i wanted to remove some lemon juice out of the water to make it taste perfect again do you think it is possible no it is impossible to remove the lemon from water because some things in life can just never be undone there was no way to remove the extra lemon from water but there sure would still be a way to fix the problem the only way to correct the situation is to add four more glasses of water and dilute it and now i have five glasses of fresh lemonade ready to be served out to four more people i think life is exactly the same we cannot undo some things that may have gone wrong in our lives some wrong decisions some wrong choices some wrong investments some wrong words what we speak which might have spoken can never be undone not that we should not try to we should definitely give our very best but after having done what we can do when we cannot reverse things to still keep trying to attempting removing lemon from water it is the similar situation which i explained you where you cannot remove lemon from water similarly we cannot reverse things and i think that would be such a sheer waste of time instead we should try to work on adding so many right things in life that the wrong seems smaller than what it was earlier when problem seems to be helplessly beyond our control rather than simply trying to remove them let us add positivity and change our experience so this is a lesson for us whenever we have a difficult time instead of worrying about the negativity add a lot of positivity into your life which will change your experience next situation is whenever you feel discouraged in life this happens to many of us we try several things in life and we cannot achieve many things that we seek for and immediately we get discouraged in life let us visualize a situation a man was watching a local football match in a school playground as he sat he asked one of the boys what the score was with a bright smile in the face the boy replied they are leading us by 30 astonished the man said really but you don't look discouraged at all the boy said discouraged 
with a puzzled look at his face. Why should I be discouraged? When the referee has not blown the final whistle yet. This was the answer from the young boy. He further added, I have confidence in my team. I have confidence on my managers and we shall definitely win the match. The match certainly was ended with 5-4 in favor of the boys team. The boy waved at the man gently with a charming smile as he left. The man was absolutely amazed. His mouth wide open, such confidence, such beautiful faith and he is just a small boy. As the man got back home that night, the boy's question was ringing in his mind again and again and again. Why should I be discouraged when the referee has not blown the final whistle yet? Ladies and gentlemen, life is exactly like a game. Why should we be discouraged when we have the support of meaningful friends and family? Why should we be discouraged when we have powers higher than us to help us? Why should we be discouraged when there is still life left? We still have a lot of days, a lot of months, a lot of years, a lot of opportunities left for us. Why should we be discouraged when the final whistle has not yet blown? So this is the attitude we need to develop. If this is not the end of everything, we still have time and we still have opportunities. But the truth is, many of us blow the final whistle ourselves by giving up. But as long as there is life, nothing is impossible. And it's never too late. Next time you feel discouraged, please remember that the final whistle is not blown yet and you still can give your best and you soon will reach there never give up this is the attitude we should possess and this is the attitude we need to inculcate in the children and the students because they keep on trying 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 definitely one day they will reach success practice makes a man perfect and when we fail we learn from our mistakes also will lead to success next situation struggling to make a right choice it happens many times to us we find so difficult to make a right choice lot of confusion comes into our mind we'll have a lot of choices and we will not be able to come to a conclusion and finally we will find a choice which is not suitable for us this is what happens because someone would advise us something we cannot take our own decision let me imagine a situation a man got lost in the desert and had exhausted all the water he had carried a couple of days ago he knew for sure if he would not get some water he would certainly die although completely exhausted he did not give up hope he kept walking looking for some sign of good fortune suddenly he saw a small hut at some distance could it be a mirage he thought or maybe a just hallucination but having a no other option left he edged closer only to realize that the hut was real gathering the last bit of energy left he dragged his tired body inside the hut hoping he could find some water the hut was empty and seemed like being abandoned for quite some time his heart skipped a beat when he saw what was in the hut a hand pump what a finally he was overjoyed he began working the hand pump but no water came up he tried harder and it harder no water came up finally after putting in every energy he gave up out of exhaustion and frustration he sat thinking maybe i'm destined to die out of thirst today and then he found a second ray of hope he noticed a bottle in one corner of the hut it was filled with water and corked up 
to prevent evaporation he uncorked the bottle and he was just about to devour the life giving water he noticed a piece of paper attached to it the handwritten message read use this water to start the pump don't forget to fill the bottle when you are done he was now in a dilemma to follow the instruction and pour the water into the pump or ignore it and just drink the water what if he put the water into the pump and it did not work but then maybe the instruction was correct should he risk it if it turned out to be false he would be throwing away the last water he would ever see have you ever been in a situation like this having only two options uncertainty about which one will work well you have to choose any one now and be willing to bear the consequences that this brings many people don't decide because they are fearful of consequences and they remain confused in their lives if you would drink that bottle of water then anyone who come that way will not get a chance to drink water the man decided to take a leap of faith hands trembling he poured the water into the pump and closed his eyes for a prayer and started working on the pump he heard the gurgling sound and water came down gushing out way more than he could possibly see he drank the cool refreshing water to his heart's content and quenched his thirst he was going to live feeling much better he locked around the hut and found a pen and a map for the region the map showed that he was still far away from the civilization but at least now he knew where he was and in which direction he go next he filled up his flask for the journey ahead and as per the instruction on the note also filled up the bottle and put the cork back in and before leaving the hut he added his own lines below the instruction believe me it works most of us may not be confronted with a situation like this where the choice made decides whether we live or die yet we have our journeys to take and our own choices to make if the choices we make goes our way it's fantastic but we can also inspire people by telling them believe me it works believe me it works suppose it doesn't go our way we can also share our mistakes share our experiences and share our realizations and empower people to make their right choices this is very essential in life when we make choices we will have consequences when we fail but we learn a lot from all those failures this is what is going to be the achievement for long this is what the children need to understand ah uh, excuse me there's some problem in the slides am i audible is it visible yes ma'am okay some problem in between okay yes ma'am thank you okay now let us uh, see about how to change our consciousness the changing the world starts with changing our consciousness let us see a situation one time a child approached a balloon seller and asked him uncle will this red balloon fly in the air the balloon seller said yes definitely my child the child again asked the balloon seller uncle the red balloon will definitely fly high but will this yellow balloon also fly high of course replied the balloon seller 
and the black one even the black one will go up in there and the blue one the balloon seller replied definitely yes it will frustrated with the child's question the balloon seller said to the child whether the balloon will go up in there or does not is not depending on the color it depends on the air or the gas that is filled inside ladies and gentlemen in the same way whether we rise in our life whether we grow in our life does not depend our form or our beauty it does not depend on the personality our abilities our qualifications alone these things are like the colors of the balloons whether we will rise up in our life depends upon our consciousness our faith and our attitude they are like air or gas that fills up the balloon that is why we say don't just focus on your personality try to become a good person if you become a good person if you improve your consciousness faith and attitude then personality is like a color of the balloon i'm not saying that one should not have a personality i'm not saying that personality should not be improved but while focusing on your personality don't forget to become a good person too if you want to change the condition of your life then change the direction of your life once life is transformed transforming our life involves going beyond the way we live so this is what is very very essential in life we keep on adding our degrees our qualifications submission of papers lot of awards lot of things to our resume but instead we should also focus on our thoughts our attitude our consciousness our faith and this should be inculcated in the children and the students this is very very important in life next i'm going to talk about the most interesting topic of mine that is power of presence of mind this is very essential in 21st century especially for the children and also for us because you know what sort of uncertainties come in our life so we need to have presence of mind to handle all those situations a businessman went to a shoe store to purchase a new pair of shoes he was a prominent person in that town after selecting a pair of shoes with size 8 he asked the sales person to pack it the sales person had just started his career and joined the shoe store a few days back the businessman soon discovered that he had left his wallet at home he told the salesman that he would take the shoes with him and make the payment the next day the salesman being new to business excused himself in order to discuss this matter with his manager the manager knew that the customer is an eminent business person however was reluctant to deliver the shoes without payment at the same time he was not ready to lose a sale too he advised the sales person to handle the situation in the best manner possible and left the place the salesman stood there frozen for few minutes unable to decide he then returned to the customer started packing the shoes and handed the package to the customer the next day the customer arrived at the store with the shoes he had purchased made the payment for this purchase and told the salesman that after opening the package i found one shoe with size 8 and the other size 7 maybe you packed them by mistake can i have the shoes with size 8 please the sales person apologized for the inconvenience caused and replaced the wrong size shoe with the correct one the customer collected his shoes and left the store with satisfaction the manager happened to overhear the conversation and realized that the sales person had used his presence of mind and handled the situation very well they did not lose their business as well as the customer the moral what we learn from this situation is 
it is by presence of mind in untried emergencies that the native metal of a man is tested if an individual has a calm state of mind his attitude and views will be calm and tranquil even in the presence of great agitation so this is a lesson i love always in any situation when you are agitated you will not be able to think only if you are calm you will be able to use your mind and see what can be done instead of thinking about what has been happened next is a very very important skill which is important in this 21st century especially empathy empathy is the capacity to understand or feel what another person is experiencing from within their frame of reference that is the capacity to place oneself in another position it is also the ability to feel and share another person's emotions some believe that empathy involves the ability to match another's emotion while others believe that empathy involves being tender hearted toward another person empathy is an important ability for career success because it improves your capacity to communicate with others to be part of your team and to better your leadership skills building one's ability to empathize is quickly becoming one of the most important task of 21st century empathy is an emotional skill that is built through understanding others one way to improve your ability to empathize with others is by working with people from different backgrounds let me explain this with the help of a situation a lady worked at a meat distribution factory one day she when she finished with her work schedule she went into the meat cold room to inspect something but in a moment of misfortune the door closed and she was locked inside with no help inside although she screamed and knocked with all her might her cries went unheard as no one could hear her most of the workers had already gone and outside the cold room it is impossible to hear what was going inside the security guard of the factory suddenly opened the door she was miraculously saved from dying that day when she later asked the security guard how he had come to open the door which wasn't his usual work routine his explanation was have been working in this factory for 35 years hundreds of workers come in and out every day but you are the one of the few who greet me in the morning and say goodbye to me every night when leaving after work many treat me as if i am invisible but this evening after working hours i curiously waited and observed that i hadn't heard your bye and see you tomorrow i look forward to your hi and bye every day ma'am because they remind me that i am someone by not hearing your favorable today i knew something had happened that's why i was searching everywhere for you so this is what he has become a saver for this lady be humble love and respect those around you try to have an impact on people who cross your path every day you never know what tomorrow will bring so this is a good lesson that we need to care for everybody irrespective of their positions irrespective of their financial situations everybody is a human look everyone as human it's not that tomorrow they are going to save you but today they will be happy because of you next i'm going to discuss on some life's amazing secrets have any of you ever had while taking a soup or indian dal or a coriander leaf basil leaves stuck in your teeth have any of you ever had barbecued corns some of the fibers stuck in your teeth have any of you had mango fiber while eating mangoes stuck in your teeth 
when something gets stuck in our tooth the tongue just keep going to that tooth until unless that stuck is out of our tooth it keeps going there now 31 other teeth in our mouth when nothing stuck the tongue can go there and say wow look there is nothing stuck there but that's the nature of the tongue that keeps going there something is stuck and surely we have to deal with it at the same time there is a lot of other good things we can focus on ladies and gentlemen it is not just the nature of the tongue isn't it the nature of our mind as well when there is a problem and issue stuck in a certain area of life the mind keeps going to that problem and just gets stuck into the negativity of trying to deal with it there are many good things happening in so many different areas of our life there is no problem or stuck hit the mind only keeps going to those areas where there are problems it is necessary for all of us that we focus on the good that is happening in our life and deal with the bad or the problems that are happening in our life let us not consume our minds with negativity let us consume our minds with positivity focus on the positive and deal with the negative count your many blessings and name them one by one it shall surprise you what lord has given you there are so many good things we have been blessed with we need to be grateful to that and this can be made as a habit when you all sit together for a dinner you can talk about what are all the good things that has happened to you that particular day the children will also catch up the habit of thinking about good things rather than complaining about bad things and therefore gratitude is the attitude which gives us the fortitude to deal with the toughest challenges in our lives i think this tip will definitely help you to focus your mind on positive things because positive emotions will give you focus and concentrations negative emotions will give you stress so let us be out of all those stress and tension and be happy always next we are going to talk about relationships open honest and safe communication is a fundamental part of a healthy relationship the first step to building a relationship is making sure you both understand each other's needs and expectations being on the same page is very very important something that each one of us cherish is something very sweet and deep to our heart is love the need of every individual to love and to be loved the only ship that never sink is a genuine meaningful relationship it's quite amazing that something that we hold so sacred and something that is of such high value to us is often so neglected and so abused in our relationships one of the factor that can bring a distance and bitterness is giving corrective feedback when we try to correct someone there is a kind of bitterness in the heart of the person whom the we trying to correct sometimes the person distances himself or herself how do we actually give a corrective feedback in a relationship in order to correct someone or say something to someone which is not very pleasant we should always try and get answer to these four questions am i the right person to correct the other individual sometimes if we ask a woman Uh, uh that the, there is only best child who's the best child she says her child is the best can any parent give a corrective feedback to someone else's child therefore when we say are you the right person to correct we should ask ourselves am i a relative am i a friend am i a well wisher am i the authority in any way to give a corrective feedback second question is do i have the right motive to correct very often the motive in correcting others is that of settling all the accounts instead of actually trying to serve the person by helping the person to come out of the wrong that he or she has done ladies and gentlemen 
in giving the corrective feedback, we have to have a high sense of conscience and come to a conclusion that when I say something corrective to a person, it is actually to serve and help the person and not to settle any old accounts. Third question is, do you actually know the right way to correct? A lot of times people are okay with taking corrections, but the way the correction is expressed is so blunt, so abusive can actually create a lot of harm to the person and the person switches off from taking any feedback. When we try to correct an issue, the issue is only 10% and 90% is the wrong tone of voice. If we just have a right tone of voice and we just say things in a right way, a lot of people are okay to handle it and our feedback of correction or advice sinks much deeper. And fourth question is, is it the right time to give the feedback? Like, for instance, if I'm going to give a talk and after my talk, someone comes, says to me, your talk was horrible. This was wrong. That was wrong. Well, it's okay. It might be wrong and it might have been horrible, but the timing is wrong. I've just finished the talk. I've prepared a lot for the talk. And therefore, if someone would have told the same thing two days later, my head will be cool and his head will be cool. He would be able to express it better and I would be able to take it better. Thus, we have to ask four questions. And on, this is the most important question that is it the right time to give feedback? We should not express our anger. We should explain our anger or feelings. When we express what we feel, it's unpleasant. When we explain what we feel, people can understand. And when the heads are hot and we are upset with something and we straight away give a feedback, it's the wrong timing because we will express. But when we allow the heads to cool, we won't express. We will be in a position to explain what we have to say. I'm going to uh, explain this concept with the help of an example. A newly married couple, he owns a business and he's always busy with his meetings. He's a very rich guy. One day he was totally exhausted with all his office hours. He called his newly wedded wife if they can go for a dinner and he was so hungry. But she said, no, dear, I prepared food for you and please come and taste my food. I've taken so much effort to learn how to make these dishes and I'm just waiting for you. And uh, he was so hungry and he came home. He was not very much to come home because he knew how the, her, his wife will cook, but still he came home and she served him the first uh, bowl of soup and she went into the kitchen to bring the other dishes. The man was so hungry, he couldn't wait for her. He took a spoon of soup and tasted and he could sense there was no salt. He just called his wife and said, my dear sweetheart, I'm really happy that you have taken so much effort to cook for me. I would like to feed you first and then we'll eat my food. Come, dear, come, come and sit next to me. She came running and sat next to him. He took a spoon of soup and fed her with a lot of love and affection. Immediately, she realized there was no salt in the soup. She stopped him from eating. She said, wait, 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 there's no salt. I'm extremely sorry. I'll go and get some salt. She gets the salt, mixes and fed him the soup. So in this way, he shared the feedback in such a nice way that she understood her mistake and she did not have anything to get hurt. So this is a wonderful incidence which you can make use of it in your life also when you are using the feedback to correct someone. So next time in your relationship, if you have to ever, ever wanted to say corrective feedback to someone, please do ask yourself these four questions. Are you the right person? Do you have the right motive? Do you know the right way? And is it the right time? Now coming to compassion. This is another important uh, skill which we need to build. And uh, a young disciple came to ask his master, Master, what is compassion? The master explained an old man was begging at the uh, busy street corner. Imagine he's begging. 
first an old lady passed by him and infuriated by the beggar poverty gave him a gold coin then the merchant noticing that a small group of men are talking about him he gave five gold coins to the beggar and quickly left while walking with his head held high and having a haughty smile then came a little boy who went to collect some flowers for his mom passed by the beggar smiled to him and gave him the flower the master asked the disciple which one of them do you think felt the most compassion towards the beggar the merchant the boy said it is the merchant he gave five gold coins the master smiling continued the merchant acted out of pride the old lady acted out of pity however the boy felt the real compassion compassion is a far greater and nobler thing than pity pity has its root in fear and a sense of arrogance sometimes even a smug feeling of i am glad it's not me whenever your fear touches someone's pain it becomes pity when your love touches someone's pain it becomes compassion feeling compassion is more essential than showing compassion so this is what is the difference between feeling compassion and feeling pity and feeling of fear to train in compassion then it is it no all beings are the same and they suffer in the similar ways everybody is same pain is same for everyone so we need to honor all those who suffer and to know you're neither separate from or not superior to anyone next is anger management the buddha said conquer anger by non anger conquer evil by good conquer miserliness by liberality conquer a liar by truthfulness the very heat of anger obscures our minds and not just our minds but those who are in touch with us anger is contagious and dangerous one day buddha and a large following mask monks and nuns were passing through a village the buddha chose a large shade of tree to sit beneath so the group could rest a while out of the heat he often chose times like these to teach and so he began to speak soon villagers heard about the visiting of the teacher and many gathered around him one young man stood to the side watching as the crowd grew larger and larger to him it seemed that there were too many people traveling from city to village and each had something to sell or teach impatient with the bulging crowd of monks and villagers he shouted at the buddha go away you just want to take advantage of us you teachers come here to say a few pretty words and then ask for food and money but the buddha was unruffled by these insults he remained calm exuding a feeling of loving kindness he politely requested that the man come forward then he asked hey sir if you purchased a lovely gift for someone but that person did not accept the gift to whom does the gift then belong the odd question took the young man by surprise i guess the gift would still remain mine because i was the one who bought it exactly so replied buddha now you have just cursed me and been angry with me but if i do not accept your curses if i do not get insulted and angry in return these curses will fall back upon you the same as a gift returning to its owner the young man clasped his hands and together and slowly bowed to buddha it was an acknowledgement that a valuable lesson had been learned and so the buddha concluded for all to hear as a mirror reflects an object as a still lake reflects the sky take care that what you speak or act is for good for goodness will always cast back goodness and harm will always cast back harm so when you feel anger and if you want to throw out words control yourself because when somebody say something on you only then you get anger don't accept their words so that you need not get angry good relationships now again i'm going to talk about the relationships good relationships don't happen overnight they take commitment compromise forgiveness and most of all effort emotional intelligence is the gateway to living a more fulfilled and happy life 
and emotional intelligence allows you to understand and manage your emotions in order to self motivate and to create positive social interactions it is the first step to realize your true potential i would like to narrate you a story or a real life incidents to understand this better which happens in many of our lives it was their anniversary and aisha was waiting for her husband rajiv to show up things had changed since their marriage that once cute couple could not live without each other had turned bitter fighting over every little things both didn't like the way things have changed aisha was waiting to see if rajiv remembered because it was their anniversary many of us do so it is our birthday it is our anniversary we expect the husband to come and remind uh, i mean come and give us a gift getting reminded of the day just as the doorbell rang she ran to find her husband wet and smiling with a bunch of flowers in his hand the two started reliving the old days making up for fights then there was a plan for uh, light music or going for a movie or going for dinner and it was very perfect day it was raining also but the moment passed when the phone in the bedroom rang aisha went to pick up the phone hello ma'am i'm calling from police station is this rajiv mera number yes it is the lady replied i'm sorry ma'am but there was an accident and the man died we got this number from his wallet we need you to come and identify his body aisha's heart sank she was shocked but my husband is here with me sorry ma'am but the incident took place at 2 pm when he was boarding the train aisha was about to lose her conscience how could this happen she heard about the soul of a person coming to meet a loved one before it leaves she ran into the other room he wasn't there it was true and left her for good oh god she would have died for another chance to mend every little fight she rolled on the floor in pain she lost her chance forever suddenly there was a noise from the bathroom the door opened and rajiv came out said darling i forgot to tell you one thing i lost my wallet today life might not give you a second chance so never waste a moment when you can still make up your wrongs we have a lot of misunderstanding with our own relationships close relationships in our home also with others in the office or in any society but out of our ego we try to avoid them and we try to hurt them and develop a lot of distance amongst them but these are all not going to give you anything relationship is very very valuable so try to see that you don't get a second chance again mend it up now itself let's start making amends to parents to siblings to friends and many more no one has a promised tomorrow have a wonderful life with no regrets this is about contact or connection this is again a what a relationship which is very very essential for every one of us we need to think about whether we have a contact with our uh, relatives or a connection a monk was being interviewed by a journalist from new york journalist asked sir in our last lecture you told us about contact and connection it's really confusing can you please explain the monk smiled and apparently deviating from the question asked the journalist are you from new york the journalist said yes i am from new york monk a monk asked who are all there at home journalist felt monk was trying to avoid answering his question since this was very personal and unwarranted question yet the journalist said mother has expired father is there three brothers and one sister and all married the monk with a smile on his face asked again do you talk to your father the journalist looked visibly annoyed the monk when did you talk to him last the journalist surprising is annoyed said maybe a month ago the monk asked do you brothers and sisters meet often when did you meet last your brother and sister did you have any family gathering at this point sweat appeared on the forehead of the journalist now who is conducting the interview the monk or the journalist it seemed that monk was interviewing the journalist with a sigh the journalist said well we met last christmas 2 years ago the monk asked how many days did you all stay together the journalist wiping the sweat on his brow he said 3 days 
Monk asked, how much time did you spend with your father sitting right beside him? The journalist, looking perplexed and embraced, and started scribbling something on the paper. The monk, did you have breakfast with your uh, father? Did you have lunch and dinner together? Did you ask how he was? Did you ask how his days are passing after your mother's death? Drops of tears coming out started to flow from the eyes of the journalist. The monk held the hand of the journalist and said, don't be embarrassed, upset or sad. I'm sorry if I have hurt you unknowingly, but this is basically the answer to your question about contact and connection. You have contact with your father, but you don't have connection with him. You're not connected with him. Connection is between heart and heart, sitting together, sharing meals and caring for each other, touching, shaking hands, having eye contact, spending some time together. You brothers and sisters have contact, but you don't have connections with each other. The journalist wiped his eyes and said, thanks for teaching me a fine and unforgettable lesson. This is the reality today. Whenever whether at home or in the society, everybody has lots of contacts. If you just see your Facebook, you have lots of contacts. If you have see your phone book, you have lots of contacts. See your LinkedIn account, you have lots of contacts. You have relatives, so many people are there, but there is no connection, no communication. Everybody is in his or her own world. Let's not maintain just contacts, but let us remain connected, caring, sharing, and spending time with all our dear ones. I think I've covered the most important life skills, which is very, very essential in today's world. You have any questions? This part is Rajita from University College from Women Hyderabad. The session has been really great and we are much inspired. I could not understand what to ask because everything seems to be happening. <laughs> Thank you. That's Nam. a very nice uh, compliment for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. This is Pragyan yeah, calling afternoon. from Bangalore. Uh, yes, I just uh, want to say thank you for just enlightening us with uh, these kind of skills, which as a mother, as a teacher, as a colleague, we need every uh, moment these kind of skills. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your patience and expectations. I, I just wanted you people to have some takeaway from this session. That's the reason I made all uh, situations here. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, this is Professor Diksha. Professor Diksha uh, yes, from Pune. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, it was a really fantastic session by you, Arind. Uh, actually, I want to ask you some question, like uh, how to uh, actually tackle with the people who uh, are diplomatic while uh, behaving with you. And they show like, no, they are very much concerned about you. But you get to know that they're not that much concerned and they are very selfish uh, towards you. And I think it happens with everyone. So uh, actually, it, it actually gives you anger and uh, your action is in that anger only, no? So that action may be wrong. And what happens is like uh, your, uh, they want your action uh, to be wrong. And uh, whatever result they get, no, they actually uh, behave accordingly. So I want to know regarding that. Yeah, ma'am, uh, actually, you need to follow um, uh, three mantras, actually. Um, I can uh, yes, call it as um, accept, uh, which cannot be changed. Okay. And change what can be changed and reject which is not acceptable. These three mantras are very essential for a happy life. First thing is certain things which are you cannot change. You know that it cannot be changed. As this COVID, you're inside the house, lockdown. Yes, you don't have any control over it. Yes. Yes. Similarly, yes. You feel somebody is uh, uh, 
talking to you making you angry they are trying their level best to make you angry why people do that why such politics happen in either in uh, office or in society when you do certain things very well people don't like that okay only then people start getting envious and they start trying to distract you from what you are doing the distraction is nothing but causing anger when you are in anger you will not be able to focus on what you are doing so this is their intention and you are very good in analyzing that you know who is with that intention yes Some yes you even do not know uh, who is with what intention so you know you can identify people and you should also be diplomatic in that case and uh, see how to avoid such people avoid such situations you have to accept you have to accept those people because you cannot change them uh, actually and you don't have to you cannot them change. inside your mind yeah actually you cannot change the scenario of the office even no because you have to meet them daily uh, in family also i understand that family members are there with us in our ups and downs we understand that but in office also how people can be so much jealous how how can be they much like envious and uh, whatever whatever uh, appreciation they should uh, they should have with uh, them no they are not doing it and yes uh, vice versa i am doing everything i am not expecting even but why why people are even educated people are more uh, more envious that i feel sometimes uh, these yeah, that is uh, uh, because uh, of the inferiority people, complex no? yes yes illiterate people are very much madam straight forward always they will not uh, uh, they will not see uh, how much uh, educated how much achievement you have but though these uh, literate people and so called uh, educated people no they show like no we are 100% perfect and uh, you are nothing and they actually they don't consider your uh, uh, your uh, uh, achievements and uh, what you are basically as a person uh, so many people say me like diksha you are a very good person and uh, i feel very good because i know that this these words will definitely give me an energy but uh, some people are really like showing that yes uh, you are very good but they are uh, they are doing such activity which is not in my favor any time and that actually hurts me i i will not uh, get angry on them or i will not uh, fight uh, with, with them because i don't fight but somewhere it hurts ma'am it is a mental yeah, like see, uh, condition uh, uh, see i uh, i'm not saying it is abnormal it is quite normal for every human being because we need appreciation we put lot of effort and when you people say today's session was good you know like i feel happy um, because the effort what is uh, that we are putting in is being recognized and appreciated this is every human being needs but you cannot change people's attitude you know not everybody is like uh, you so when they behave like that it's better to ignore them and uh, just don't consider them at all you don't go into an investigation on why people are like this Yes, this is the yes. wrong thing what we are doing because it's waste of our time because we cannot do anything about it it is god's creation so ignore them and you don't change your attitude because you should be different from others you be as you are you keep smiling because the people who agitate you wanted to see you unhappy okay yes, and if yes, you yes. show them that you are unhappy they will feel they are, uh, they, are they have done something great and they will feel a victory so in order to uh, make them understand those things does not affect you at all you just have to as i said the buddha said the anger management you know like uh, if you give something to somebody and they don't take it it reminds with me similarly when they abuse you or they talk bad about you if you don't receive from them that, that means it stays with them only they will uh, they will get uh, dejected okay well, how many times i'm trying she is not getting disturbed you 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 cannot you, they cannot do continuously because they are winning every time you are winning every time but not by not making them win so the attitude should be something like you compare within your own um, um, outcomes you think only about yourself you know about your ability you know about your uh, uh, achievements yes, and how good you are yes, so you don't expect anybody who will uh, who will uh, come and appreciate you is who will know your worth only will come and appreciate for people who do not know your worth so something like a, um, a diamond um, you go and sell in a fish market they will not know the value of it 
you should do, go to your diamond shop to sh- um, um, sell it then only the diamond man will know what is the value of the diamond yes, so you exactly. try to project yourself in a place where they know your value so you stay in a place where or whom you feel have a value of yours or above us not below you so if they are below you only they they are unable to withstand your uh, growth and that is the reason they can't reach your level but still they will try to pull you down to their level so this is what yeah, happens yeah, yeah. in the world okay so don't yes, uh, so. uh, do you just ignore hello ma'am ignoring is the best thing yes ma'am yes ma'am thank okay. you hello so ma'am thank you uh, yes ma'am hello ma'am am i well yes ma'am in the same regard i want to ask one thing many time it happens that you have done all the work from a to z and there are some people who are habitual to show off and credit goes to them so how to behave in such situations no ma'am please don't change yourself you be as you are all those things are just for short duration it, it is not forever one day people will know who is real and who is false so don't get uh, see don't live for uh, somebody to accept you appreciate you recognize you things will come automatically when time comes you keep improving yourself and don't change your good attitude don't show off you remain silent your action will show you but generally what happens in front of the seniors or boss if you are not unable if you are unable to show off then obviously they will not identify your talent so see showing get- off is different showing us off is different and um, uh, sharing your accomplishments is different so you need to have a digital uh, medium where sending mails on updating what you are doing or putting in a, a, a professional network about your achievements so this way you can project yourself without doing anything showing off the meaning is totally different and doing something and projecting yourself in a better way as a report you can send a report to your seniors with uh, with proofs so this way you can think in a very uh, cre- creative manner how you can project your uh, accomplishments okay ma'am thank you ma'am thank you very much hello madam hello yes sir yes sir hello dr mukund speaking from nasik madam yes sir in a very short uh, time of the session you have left uh, no stone unturned and to teach <laughs> the, uh, okay. to teach the art how to uh, move amongst uh, the selfish people in a very mm-hmm. selfless way okay this is really this is really a very important life skill and i must congratulate you for your wonderful speech and uh, wonderful so, anecdotes <laughs> Madam, thank you so much, much uh, for your very, good words and your blessings <laughs> yeah yeah thank at you the so same much. time it is very unimitable madam so i must uh, congratulate you and uh, that is why i just call you and, so nice uh, of you to <laughs> take a chance to because this means a lot to me so these feedbacks yeah. you know like if it is uh, this one hour should not go waste because of me that is what i used to think so yeah. something we can do something in the time what you spend you expect something from me i should be able to give you at least a one or 10% uh, yes. benefit yes yes madam thank you very much madam thank okay. you sir god bless you sir nice day nice day <laughs> thank hello. you hello 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 hello. hello. Yes ma'am. Yes. I am Deepak Ranjan from Central University of Haryana. Ma'am as you described yes, about con- contact and correction. Connection, connection contact yeah. and connection. Yes ma'am. Yes, I yes. like to I like to query about difference between sympathy and empathy. Empathy. Yes. Yes yes. Yes. You want the difference is it? Yes yes ma'am. Okay, sympathy is something like pity only. Feeling bad or poor fellow like that empathy is um, empathy can be very simply explained like i am here and you are there i need to feel through your heart and i need to look the world through your eyes that is what is empathy i should feel myself in your position and i should feel through your heart how you are feeling i should be able to know how you are feeling and i should look at the world through your eyes that is empathy sympathy is feeling pity may okay. i may i speak may i speak something in this regard madam yes yes very much sir uh, just just thinking ourselves in the place of that person that is called uh, sympathy i think 
sympathy uh, you will not feel uh, yourself in that position but you will feel pity for them okay okay oh. empathy is only feeling yourself in others position feel yeah. putting your feet in their shoes ha ah, right right okay madam thanks thank you madam thank you thank you so much dear participant any more questions or to be discussed with ma'am ma'am you would like to share anything else ma'am to us thank you as a note what else <laughs> uh thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, in this international forum and uh, making me feel so proud and i feel uh, so honored to be part of this uh, webinar and uh, i thank all the audience for having trust that they will gain something in this session and i hope uh, by seeing the comments and the feedback that it has been useful and uh, many people succeed in life and many do not everybody after this session will have a thought in their mind uh, that they should do something an action plan will be there that they should implement everything will be there they think they plan they decide but a successful person is one who implements this so try to implement the skills what we have discussed and beyond that there are many more skills so we learn a lot from failures and we need to correct ourselves from failures and lead a very successful and happy life god bless you all yeah thank you ma'am uh, dear participants this is the only reason where when i go out with many expert speakers i choose dr usha ishwaran to be on this particular day on the particular topic where i suggested her and she accepted our request and she has been here and uh, i hope this might be an enlightening session and something that you might take it as a lesson that i just messaged you in the morning itself something that you will get a lesson today yes this is what i feel and i would like to quote one thing ma'am uh, winners don't do different things they do things differently by shiv keras <laughs> this is okay. purely absolutely shots for you that something oh. that happened, uh, a revolution or something has happened reformation has been happened by throughout your session really we couldn't even see the timing it was been mind blowing and mindfulness thank you ma'am and uh, thank, thank you. you thanks a lot i would like to invite uh, mrs priyanka gupta founder and managing editor of international journal of advanced study and research work to propose vote of thanks officially yeah hi uh thank you for giving me opportunity to express vote of thanks to all of you on behalf of organizing committee uh today i'm uh, my special thanks to our guest of honor dr usha ishwaran thank you for gracing your important work and sharing with us your findings opinion today thank you to all the participants who patiently listened to speakers and made the webinar successful thank you and have a nice day yeah thank you priya and uh, thank you ma'am and thank you all the participants will meet on tomorrow in the day 5 of our international webinar series and thank you ma'am for uh, spending the whole thank time thank you and participants you. a kind note that i would like to stress out here ma'am was been on his busy schedule she have been scheduled as <laughs> and the commitment she mailed us the ppt at 1:30 in the early morning and really your commitment shows that how far you are being admired by your speech and the way that you presented it's like something a book when we read we travel with that it is like that your voice been making us to travel as like it is and really we enjoyed ma'am and it was been an enlightening and informative session something revokes in our life as a lesson thanks a lot ma'am oh. <laughs> thanks for uh, beautiful words uh, vishnu god bless you thank you thank you ma'am